Today's episode is called, Dog Days at Shady Rest. Railroad President Norman Curtis thinks that his household's pet basset hound needs a change of scenery, so he sends the dog with Homer Bedlow off to Shady Rest. In a reflective moment at the end of the episode, Kate muses, My lovely daughters. A beautiful sound. Summer smoke. Bees buzzing. Honeysuckle. How lucky we are. Of course, it gets hot, but I don't even mind dog days, as long as they're at the Shady Rest. Original air date, April 28, 1964. Come ride the little train that is rolling down the tracks to the junction. Forget about your cares, it is time to relax at the junction. Lots of curves, you bet. And even more when you get to the junction. Petticoat Junction. There's a little hotel called the Shady Rest at the junction. Petticoat. It is run by Kate, come and be her guest at the junction. Petticoat Junction. And that's Uncle Joe, he's a moving kind of slow at the junction. Petticoat Junction. Like this. Got a telegram for your mother. Hey, telegram for you. A telegram? What's that, Mama? Telegram? What's it about? How should I know? It's marked personal for your mother. Who would send me a telegram? Norman P. Curtis. He's a riot. <laughs> <laughs> he still claims he's president of the CNFW Railroad. Well, what's the message? Well, how would I know? That Norman says Bedlow's coming back out here again. That sneaky Mr. Bedlow. He's always trying to scrap the cannonball. This time he's got a henchman with him named Fred. Don't start worrying, Mom. Yeah, you've outsmarted Mr. Bedlow before. I wonder what skullduggery he's dreamed up this time with this... Fred. Mr. Curtis, I've just come back from the cattle car convention. Heard you're sending me to Hooterville. Now you're on the right track, Bedlow. And so are you, sir. Oh, I knew eventually you'd see things my way. You know, when you've got a liability, you've got to get rid of it for the good of the railroad. Oh, I'll junk that Hooterville cannonball so fast, those people down there will think they have a breakaway toy. Well, now you're on the wrong track. They thought they were going to outsmart your vice president. Well, now that I've got your support, I can get rid of that antediluvian eyesore, that Tunaville folly. Those people down there are going to drop to their bended knees. Now who's got the last laugh? <laughs> You're not laughing, Mr. Curtis. Bedlow, you are a mean man. Thank you, sir. I try. Every organization must have a mean man, and ours is the best mean man in the business. Thank you, sir. But you lay one clammy finger on that cannonball, and I'll have you tied to the tracks. But, Mr. Curtis! I'm sending you to Hooterville this time on a mission of mercy. Mercy? Me? You feel all right, Chief? I feel fine. It's Fred who doesn't feel well. Fred? Who's Fred? I have already wired Mrs. Bradley. Kate, a wonderful woman. Oh, boy. To reserve adjoining rooms for the both of you. Adjoining rooms? Fred belongs to my housekeeper. Now they're both getting old, but I love them dearly. Now, cooped up in my penthouse, he's lost his snap. So I'm sending him to the Shady Rest with you. I'm to go to the Shady Rest with a dog? Oh, Fred is more than a dog. He's a beloved companion to my housekeeper and me. Well, he doesn't look like any more than a dog to me. That could find a city living. He's lost his doginess, haven't you, old pal? In the world of apartments and city living, it's wrong to bark to be a dog. Fred, old pal, I haven't heard you bark in months. <laughs> but one week with those wonderful people, and Fred will come back a changed man. Revitalized by their robust way of life. So that's what my efforts to close down that railroad have led to. Lowering my status, so I'm a keeper of the dog. Is that it? Not really, Bedlow. 
I was hoping to kill two birds with one stone. I want the love and the kindness of those people to rub off on you, too. I sincerely hope by the time you get back, you will have broadened your perspective. You know, there's really more to life, Bedlow, than banging your head against a cannonball. Now, how can you disagree with that? I can't, because you're the president, sir. And I'm merely your vice president in charge of a dog. A month you've been hounding me to get back to that valley. Now that I've given you the opportunity, what do you say? Thank you. <laughs> Will your bag on up to the hotel, Mr. Bedlow? Right. Good grief! Look! What's that? That? That's Arvel's flivver ball. Running on the scene of W tracks? He's Betty Joe's boyfriend. He put hand car wheels on his flivver so he could drive out here to visit her. He uses our tracks? Ain't any others. Hi, Mr. Pratt. Greetings. What are they doing? What we always do when Arvel signals he's about out of gas, we tow him into Pixley. Fred, I'd report this to the president of the railroad, but he wouldn't believe me. And you wouldn't back me up. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Don't fall for those city slickers. You'll only get hurt. Now, you stop that. This is a miserable trip, so you stay miserable. <laughs> now, stop that dilly-tallying. We have to face the enemy. I, I have the beginning of a plan. I'll appeal to their sympathy and draw them in, and then... Well, I don't know what that and then's gonna be just yet, but believe me, there'll be an and then. That... that's Fred? This is Fred. <laughs> oh, look at Fred. So this is Fred, a bloodshot bassin. <laughs> When you buy a suit with two pair of pants, you don't wear both pair at the same time, Fred. Oh, Joe, you'll hurt his feelings. Oh, come on, Fred. Fred, I'm not leaving. Mr. Bedlow, we got the telegram. But what brings you and uh, Fred to the Shady Rest? Would you believe it if I said I came to bank the fires of brotherhood? No. You don't understand me, Mrs. Bradley. I'm a changed man. I have no reason to lie. Then that must mean that temporarily you ran out of reason. Now, oh, is that nice, Mrs. Bradley? I came in a spirit of friendship and the role of a humane citizen caring for a tired old dog. Uh, girls, would you turn down the beds for our humane guest, Mr. Bedlow, and watch him like a hawk? <laughs> Bye, Fred. Oh, you've got me wrong this time, Mrs. Bradley. I'm not the Bedlow you used to know. That surreptitious, miserable man of old who thought of this lovely retreat as a Victorian egg crate <laughs> or referred to that magnificent Hooterville cannonball as a despicable piece of, of shrapnel on wheels? <laughs> no, no, I'm a, I'm a change man. Now back up, Bedlow. That ain't like you. The explanation is, is simple but honest. When I was introduced to Fred here, his master, as president of our company, this dog, this noble creature crept into my heart and changed my life. Fred, old pal, come on. <laughs> That's it, old boy. Come on now. Come on, Fred. Come on, old boy. <laughs> oh, come on, Fred. That's it. Off we go. <laughs> Yes, you're happy. Well
Well, I'm not, and I won't be until I find a way to destroy everything. <laughs> oh, stop <laughs> wagging that stupid tail. <laughs> Wait a minute. That's it. If I can bring you back in worse shape than you came, the president will cease being a patron of this backwater stop. I can regain my full status. If Kate Bradley and her clan can't cheer you up, if they goof, oh, oh, my lumpy friend, you've given me the greatest scheme I've had in a long, long time. The poor guy, I think I hear him talking to the dog up there all alone. He was talking all alone when he was down here. Now, Kate, old Homer's a nice guy. He's a changed man. Let him up. Somebody's got to be down before you let him up. Now, there you go, Kate. You got good points, but you're a mighty poor judge of character. I beg to differ. I think that Mr. Bedlow is mean and tricky, and you are an old softy. Kate Bradley, that's the meanest thing you ever said to me in my life. <laughs> oh, Mr. Bedlow, are the um, rooms all right? Wonderful. Everything's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Are you and uh, Fred hungry? Certainly are. Well, I'll fix something for both of you right away. Oh, any old time for me, Mrs. Bradley. But feed good old Fred here. Best in the house, please. Certainly, Mr. Bedlow. And if he gives you any trouble, boot him out. Use a broom on him. Remember, you must love a dog and feed a dog, but never let a dog get the upper hand. You know? I'll try not to. <laughs> <laughs> I look at Mr. Bedlow and then at this dog, and I see a Trojan horse. He ain't no Trojan horse. It's just a beagle in a bloodhound suit. <laughs> I feel sorry for him, even his droop droops. Oh, I love Fred. But a smiling, happy Mr. Bedlow, that worries me. Kate, did you ever heard the expression, if a leopard wants to change his spots, let him? <laughs> the expression goes like this. A leopard doesn't change his spots. I knew it was something like that. <laughs> that sounds like the bark of a happy dog. <laughs> That's disgusting. Revolting. Make your move, Homer, old boy. Starting now. Here. That's a lot neater. Look at him dig in. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Mrs. Bradley. I just remembered that dog's on a strict diet. Pills for his ulcer, pills for his arteries, and pills for his nerves. And powdered dog food, which I will give him. See what I mean? I still say he ain't no Trojan horse, just a basset full of pills. <laughs> Feeling your oats around here, ain't you? All right, Fred. Back to your room. Oh, it's all right. He's taken to playing games with me. He likes me and my Indian. As a matter of fact, he likes all of us. We like him, too. He's the best paying guest we've had. <laughs> Don't you see what's happened? He's become a barker. Is that bad? I've never known a dog as much of a talker. <laughs> I bet it's bad. Now, I, I didn't want to say this to Mrs. Bradley, as I didn't want to worry her. But I feel I can tell you. Sure, you can tell me anything. And you're right, Kate is a warrior. The president of the railroad paid a lot of money to have that dog trained, and he's run wild up here. Do you know what the president would do if I brought back an undisciplined barker? No. I know a lot about dogs, but I ain't had much truck with presidents lately. <laughs> well, this one's got a mean temper. He'd scrap the cannonball for sure. Why would he want to do that? Why? Because you people have turned his dog into a barker. Yeah, I guess we did. Oh, we're sorry. Well, being sorry won't be enough for the president. There must be something you can do to return Fred to his old dignified self. You know, I'd hate to see you and Mrs. Bradley and those three lovely girls in the poorhouse. <laughs> so would I. <laughs> if it's only a matter of stopping Fred from barking, I can do that. Good. And remember, my friend, the poorhouse might be bad, but you also have to climb over a hill to get to it. Thanks, Homer. I'll keep that in mind. Good, very good, and wise, too. Hey, 
You know, I cured a dog from a barking fit once by just scaring him a little. Would you think you might perform that glorious service for old Fred? Well, I can try it. You go up the stairs away, and when I start dusting the Indian, let him go. I salute you, sir. <laughs> you are a man among men. I've yet to meet your equal. Come along, noble beast. <laughs> Take it personal. He won't even bark for my stew. Uncle Joe, you broke his spirit. Bedlow didn't want him to bark. I said discipline him, not ruin him. Tomorrow I'm taking that dog home, away from this, this, this bedlam. And when the president of the CNFW finds out what you people... Oh, have... so that's your plan to scrap the cannonball. That's right. I made a better mouse trap and caught all of you in it. You, you'd ruin a dog just to ruin us. You stated so simply, Mrs. Bradley. Beautiful, isn't it? Victory clutch from the jaws of defeat. Beautiful. Fred, you're beautiful. Life is beautiful. I gotta go next door and pack. <laughs> well... What do you think of good old Homer now? I think he's a south end of a Trojan horse going north. <laughs> well, I'm not as worried about the president as I am about poor Fred. Before he goes back, we just gotta make him feel better. He looks so sad and forlorn, Uncle Joe. Do you think we'll ever be able to make him bark again, Uncle Joe? Aren't we lucky to have an expert on dog psychology, Uncle Joe? <laughs> Why'd I let myself get suckered in by that bedlow? I am too smart for that. You said that, I did. <laughs> we tried to sneak him out to bark at rabbit trails, but he just looked at us. I don't think he'll ever bark again. I know I won't. I've just about worn all the paint off my Indian, dusting him. He won't even come near me. Girls, let's take a walk. Good morning, girls. Good morning. Good morning. We didn't try that. Try what? Well, you know about old dogs. A pretty charmer makes them feel like pups again. <laughs> What are you getting at, Kate? Before the cannibal comes back to pick up Mr. Bedlow and Fred, we gotta round up every girl dog we can find. Fred Ziffel, the pig farmer's got one. Looks more like a pig than a dog. I'll get it. <laughs> Girls, wait, we got work to do. <laughs> Where's Mr. Bedlow? He's upstairs. He'll be right down. All right, start the parade. Come on, come on, come on. Look, Fred. Look what we brought for you. Aren't these sweet? Aren't they sweet? Look at this one. Isn't she pretty? Look, Fred, they're bricks apart doing the dog world. Hold on, wait a minute. Now stop all this nonsense immediately. Oh, I get it. You're beating Fred the Bark with all these canine cuties, but that's unfair. Next. Well, this is the last of the batch, Fred. Bark a little. Bark. I got a secret weapon. I'll be right back. Thank you, thank you, one and all, for giving me living proof that you've killed Fred's spirit.
Well, I tried. No doubt about it, Fred. You are a beat bastard. Bedlam, bedlam, bedlam. You people deserve to have this place shut down. And you know why? Because you've got no perspective, no sense of values, no appreciation of money. You'd rather cater to a canine and worry where your next dollar's coming from. You're right. You're sick. Come on, Fred. Don't drag him. I'll carry him down for you. Poor feller, he looks like he's bought on his last legs. Well, thanks to you, wait till I show him to the president. The melting down of the cannonball will be a monument to Fred. Depressed friend, and we'll get aboard. Goodbye, Fred. Goodbye, Fred. Goodbye, Shady Rest. Yeah, what's going on? He looks so sad. I don't think Fred wants to live anymore. He doesn't? Why not? I barked at him, that's why. You want to make something out of it? Barked at him? Oh, Uncle Joe, stop blaming yourself. We did all we could to pull him out of it. We couldn't get him interested in anything. Why didn't you show him Sheba? He was real interested in her. Sheba? Fred's interested in that mutt. She's pathetic. <laughs> well, he nearly proposed to her the first time he saw her. It was love at first sight. Well, why didn't you say so, you dopey kid? Stop the train! Joe, it's too late. Granted, she's just a stray and doesn't look like much, but you'd think somebody'd want her. You don't? Well, I can't keep her. I took her to Pixley, but I couldn't give her away. Stop the train! <laughs> Uncle Joe, it's too late. But it may not be too late for a long shot. Shot at Bedlow? That's a good idea. Bedlow's not too far away for that. Give me a gun. <laughs> Orville, you are going to take Sheba to the airport in the flivver ball. I am? Sheba to the airport, Mom? Yes. I think the president of the CNFW Railroad deserves a present from all of us at Shady Rest. You mean that flea-bitten female? Well, if Fred was bitten and smitten, that's good enough for me. Mom, I think that's a wonderful idea. What a welcome home for Fred. Come on, Sheba. Come on, baby. Here we go. Now then, what worries me is, how do you package a dog? How do you package a dog? How about using my cat crate? <laughs> yes, come in. Oh, Bedlow, you're back. It was sad, sad news, sir. Look at what those people have done to poor Fred. What did they do? Well, Fred hasn't eaten, he hasn't played, he hasn't barked in days. They... <laughs> Where did you get that morale builder? Oh, she's a present from Kate Bradley and the, and the folks at the Shady Rest. Now, you were saying? Well, I, uh... Oh, before you start composing your lie, I think maybe you'd better walk Fred and his country cousin down to the nearest meat market and buy them each a steak. The nearest market's two miles away. Yes, it is quite a walk, isn't it? Well, it certainly is. Well, maybe you better get them two steaks. Now, you get going, Bedlow, and take care of the dogs. You know, I'm disappointed in you. You came back in a foul humor, and a foul humor is contagious. It might depress the dogs. So you watch it. But... Don't butt me. <laughs> Be happy. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Isn't that nice of Mr. Curtis to send me a telegram saying that everything worked out fine? Wasn't it nice of me letting you open it first? <laughs> Bye, Mom. Uncle Joe. Bye. See you later. Bye. Bye-bye. What lovely daughters. What a beautiful sound. <sighs> Summer smoke. Bees buzzing. Honeysuckle. How lucky we are. I have cinder in my eye. 
course, it, it, it gets hot, but I don't even mind dog days as long as they're at Shady Rest. How about you, Uncle Joe? <laughs> Uncle Joe? Junction. Junction. 